Hello and welcome to this week's episode. If you remember last week, we helped American McGee with his first Pirate Jam. But before that, we were actually in Ko Chang. We were, we were still in Ko Chang and we were making plans. We were making plans to head south. Big plans. But possibly a little bit further south than you're imagining. Indeed. We are planning to head to Sumatra. You've heard us say it before, but it's actually gonna happen. It is, we should be going in about six weeks or something like that. Yep, six weeks. So we've got six weeks to plan this big trip. We're hoping to do a complete circumnavigation, possibly. Uh, we'll see how the weather is, but we've got lots to do. There are a lot of things to sort out on the boat. Yep. We've got that new sail, of course, if you remember, we've got a rip in our mainsail, so we've got to sort that out. We've spoken to someone already, he reckons he can do it as well, and in yep. the time, so yep. Yep. cross everything. So it's all looking good, but there's lots to do. And of course, the first thing we have to do is get from Ko Chang and start heading south. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, and it's time to leave Chang. Yeah, it's time to push on. We have an appointment down in Lanta, but it does mean that we've got to start leaving now, which is very sad because we absolutely love it here. Chang is possibly favorite place in Thailand. There we go, I said it. sails out but they're kind of not really doing anything because there is literally no wind. Uh, 0 0.9 knots true wind. There we go. Under a time constraint you can't really pick your weather windows. Obviously if the weather was atrocious then we wouldn't risk it but uh, when it's like this we have to motor instead of just hanging out at anchorages. Never mind. Nice day though. We have just dropped the hook at one of my favorite spots, which is about, uh, well, we did 21 miles today from Ko Chang, so it's about 15 miles from Payam. And it's a little group of islands, which I discovered last year when I came up here on my own. Uh, when we came back up this year, unfortunately the weather wasn't very good to us. So we had to duck behind uh, the island, just behind the mizzen sail here. But uh, this is really why I particularly like this spot. It's this spit, this uh, extra island here which is surrounded by beautiful golden sand as I swing round into the wind unfortunately. You can see there behind me this beautiful beach. I've just seen one trip of boat, it's just uh, gone and uh, this is it, it's just us and uh, this group of islands. So I think we're going to go ashore, take the snorkel gear, I don't know what's underwater but it certainly looks like it's worth exploring on land anyway. Oh dear, jet skis. <laughs> if there is the perfect beach in this area apart from places like Chang and Payam then this comes pretty close as you can see proper golden sandy we've got pine trees up on the shore there and beautiful it looked they look like clear waters we're yet to go in we'll go for a little swim and uh, we've just dropped the hook just over there I've noticed another boat's come in and I think that is Kerry and Lynette our friends on Failway which is quite nice so yeah it's very very pretty it's quite remote uh, it's a fair uh, few miles from from the mainland over there uh, they did have park rangers who have come along and asked us to pay 600 baht which is about 12 to 15 pounds which is 
Well, we know that there are obviously areas that are designated national park, and I guess this is probably one of them. Of course, they won't ask the local fisherman and his family for the 600 baht or whatever it is. Um, you know, I guess we should pay it, but well, we will pay it, of course we'll pay it. It goes towards the upkeep of this place. It probably goes towards the cost of their jet skis as well. Those were the two guys that we saw earlier on the jet skis, they're the park rangers. But as you can see, it's pretty clean, beautiful, and very well kept. It is a little bit of a jewel in the crown of this part of uh, Northern Thailand. Sorry, Southern Thailand, Northern Thailand. Southern Thailand. Okay, so I think it's probably about time we had at least one question, don't you? Yeah, a quick question. And this one we get asked a lot. Yep. And it was most recently put succinctly by one of our Patreons, Rachel Stevens. Hi, Rach. Uh, don't forget to send us your address, by yeah, the way, for your it. postcard and your T-shirt. Yeah. Rachel asks, do we get seasick? The answer to that is... No, we don't. We, we don't. No, we're pretty lucky. Neither of us get seasick in even some terrible weather we've been through. Mm. So we're doing pretty well. But it is a very pertinent question. And I think a number of people who are thinking they might want to live this lifestyle um, do suffer from it. And they're wondering how they're going to cope with it and whether it lasts any, a length of time. Yeah, I mean, we've sailed with people who do get seasick. Co very competent mm. uh, salesmen and women who, as part of their... Uh, routine I suppose after they slip the lines is to basically stay in the cockpit for the first 24 hours because they can't handle going down below that's one of the worst things you can do isn't it to get down below in a rough mm. sea so mm. the trick is to stay in the cockpit yeah it's quite a common thing a number of the, of the vloggers out there you'll always see on their vlogs when they go out to sea the first couple of days everyone's not feeling too great we're lucky it doesn't really affect us uh, even Millie's okay yeah Millie's pretty cool actually I mean obviously when she first came on the boat she was a bit like what the hell's going on here mm. But she's pretty comfortable. She finds her spot in the cockpit and, yeah, she's pretty happy. She is. Even in the roughest of weather, she's been down below and she, she'll go into a locker, won't she? She, mm. just, she just, just hides in there and we feed her and whatnot. But, uh, so on Esper, we are a very lucky crew. We don't at all suffer from seasickness. But it is something you have to watch out for if you've got crew and so guests. So what would you recommend then? Because for me, what I try and do is I set sail on a full stomach, if yeah. I remember. Try not to drink too much coffee, which I tend to do. Um, yeah, it's really about going to sea feeling comfortable and, and full for me. But yeah. there's, lo there's lots of other options as you well. You have to keep people hydrated. If they are feeling very queasy and they're un unable to keep things down, you have to. M you must watch them because it is potentially, if it goes on for too long, life-threatening. Uh, so lots of water um, and lots of rehydration as much as possible. But that's very severe seasickness. One would hope that uh, when you get onto the boat, you've got an idea if you're going to be seasick and you do have some medication with you, obviously that does help. Mm. So now we're going to go back to our adventure heading south and this time we are, we've moved on from the islands and we're now in the estuary where Jamie is going to show us just how beautiful this estuary, which is just west of Khao Sok Lake, is. And when we were there, it was completely deserted. We were the only ones there. First light at around about seven o'clock. We are in what I call the estuary. And as you can just see behind me, sun's rising above the horizon and there is this huge entrance here. It goes on for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. And then someone decides to come along an anchor right there. Now twisted to the back side. That is one of my favourite views, seeing those three sails all out nicely parallel to each other. 
giving us a fairly respectable uh, between 3.6 and 3.9 knots uh, in five and a half knots of wind, which is pretty good. Bearing in mind, of course, we've also got the tide against us as well. In a few hours now and we're still sailing two and a half knots nice and gentle easing our way into Banthrap Lamu you can see how far we can sail into the entrance I'm hoping uh, that we'll sail all the way down to the anchorage but there is a bit of land which might block the wind so we might have to take down uh, the mizzen stay sail but it's been a real joy having her up sailing along nicely in the Andaman Sea on the west coast of Phuket and we're heading from north to south and it's very different to the six or seven weeks ago when we came up here so we've got a, we're doing about four knots I think no, I think it's at least four knots yeah actually. at least four perhaps a bit more we've got a westerly wind which is a bit odd but it's the morning so perhaps it'll change in a bit flat seas it's quite gentle and quite pleasant we've got all day we're not going far but if you compare it with the trip upwards there is no comparison because we had huge weather, big swell, unpleasant winds, and we had to motor the whole way. Uh, but it's very nice to come back down the, the same route and really enjoy it. stop at Naihan which is just over my left shoulder but there's about 500 million thousand boats in there and it looks like a car park or a boat park so we're not going to do that we're going to carry on we're going to go around the corner where we hope there'll be a bit more room just around the corner from the bottom of the, I suppose you could call it the Cape. So this is looking back into Outerlong Bay and you can see we're just tucked behind this island here. It's a big one today, 60 miles, so it's six in the morning or thereabouts, so we thought we'd get up now and leave. Of course, typically last night as we went to sleep, we had quite a bit of wind. And of course we wake up this morning to no wind. So we're gonna to have to start by motoring, but hopefully we should get some wind a little bit and uh, shake those sails out and turn the engine off. Cool. 